Yo, JD here, Tiro Limits, and we are finally back with some more world record attempt videos. It's been quite a while. I've been pretty ill recently. I'm actually still ill, even commentating on this as of right now. And yeah, but it was good to get back into this one. Very, very happy with this because this is a track that is actually probably one of my worst tracks on the game. A track I just... I enjoy driving, but I just really, really struggle at. And the top time to beat right now is by NUFC Ryan, who actually races within the league. He's a very quick driver, but he is using ABS, which I mentioned before in this car. ABS is very powerful, very beneficial. Have tested it myself, in fact. It just, it's not too much quicker, I'd say, but it's just so much easier to just be on the limit because you just do not have to worry, do not have to worry about that back end stepping out or locking up at all which is incredibly easy in this car because this car as i said countless of times it is just so sensitive especially on the rear end if you just carry just a one mile an hour too quick into a corner the back end will just simply wash away but as always doing these attempts always going out with the default setup which just feels like an oil tanker trying to drive around these tracks and yeah, the understeer is just ridiculous, but my target for this default setup, if I could get in the 33s, you know, two seconds and a bit off, what I should be doing maxed out with a setup is the trend I have been seeing, then, you know, if I got in the 33s, I'd be extremely happy with that, with a default. So that's what I'm aiming for right now. But this track is pretty notorious for track limits. Sometimes you can go off pretty easily and it doesn't do anything but overall it is pretty harsh uh, so yeah gotta keep my wits about me and just build up that rhythm and momentum which I always bang on about every single video or one of these videos it's just so crucial to just be a better player to be honest just getting that consistency down is just so important and just having that flow that you really need to get but coming across the line the first lap is a 34 0.874 which is not too bad but you can see there is plenty of time in the tank so you're going to be seeing quite a few laps here where I'm just going to keep going and going and I just feel that is so important because not only are these videos to entertain but they are also to hopefully give you an insight of what it really takes to just improve to your max and to you know go after potential world records and stuff as well and just becoming an overall better player this is the pain you have to go through for me personally this is what i would advise is just to keep on going all the time but we actually restarted that after all me talking about that i actually restarted that but you've seen me plenty of times where i just keep on going and going even if i'm bad day just to keep on going here so we restarted it this is the very first lap I've done since I've restarted here and I never move on to a setup until I feel I've done a pretty decent 8 out of 10 default setup lap. That's really the target here. So go through here already. You can see how much time we are up already and this car is just amazes me how much time you can just gain. Just turning that fraction earlier, just the fraction, just the tiniest differences you change in your driving as we actually lock up a little bit there but the tiniest differences just the angle you put into the corner just the speed you carry in and just your acceleration you're braking not locking up like i did going to that last corner you could just gain a huge amount of time and it won't really even look that different but just those small small details makes such a huge difference and locking up again into here but actually getting away with it still getting a pretty decent exit going into this one is really difficult the back end with a stock setup that's already wanting to step out there so i can't imagine what it's going to be like with a real setup on here but nonetheless i'm actually still quite a bit up on this time some corners were good but we definitely lost the temp for two in a good couple of them and locking up again going into this last corner let's see what we go across the line here and that's a 33.9 with i wouldn't even say an 8 out of 10 lap i'd say that's probably like a 6 or 7 maybe you know, just about 7 out of 10 lap there for a default setup so now at the time i was actually pretty happy about but looking at that i 
concede there's a ton of time left in there so we got into the 33s with a default which is in the top 60 in the world no that's pretty decent actually and i think the fastest no assist time is a 32.6 so we're only about 1.3 seconds off from that but we'll just go download the top time set see what kind of set he is rocking which is traditionally looking at it firsthand is not something i'd run putting down that brake pressure because he is using abs that is the advantage of it the stopping power is going to be so insane with him using abs because he just doesn't have to worry about locking up or the rear end just spitting out or anything at all so i'm putting it down a little bit lower and i feel putting it lower as well i always like to run with a little bit of lower brake pressure anyway i just find it allows me to keep up the momentum going through the high speed corners much much more and that's something i've been doing as we invalidate it here that's something i've been doing ever since i started playing f1 games i always go for a low uh, brake pressure because i feel it's easier on the tires in the race and it just really keeps up that momentum you don't lock up as much or anything at all it's more stable on the car as well and I feel, you know, it, sometimes you do need a high stopping power, but most of the time, I feel you can really get away with a low brake pressure. But that is just my two cents going to here now. We've already invalidated it, but as I always say, just keep on going. This is my first lap with the setup itself, and I'm just going to just push it to see how it feels. Give it a good two or three laps, potentially. Sometimes I do just change it immediately if I just don't like it. But this is just to give you an insight. Like I said in my Australia video, the very first video I did of this series, oh, well, I forget, it was actually Silverstone, but I said that Australia. Sometimes, although you've downloaded the best setup, does not mean it is going to work for you at all in the slightest, because I've had this first hand from eSports experience, knowing people's setups, setups that I've tried and stuff myself. Sometimes the opposite to what a lot of guys are running is actually the fastest set for you and sometimes that is the race winning setup you know some people have asked me what's up i ran into passes we're almost losing the car there and it's just complete opposite to what they're running and my first thoughts of that haven't really improved too much you know, by about half a second or something like that but it just felt very oversteery for me and again that really boils down to uh, Ryan using ABS because with ABS you just have so much more stability you can get away with running this kind of a setup as well I did change it to 11 ballast as we invalidate once again I did change it to 11 ballast because I feel you're just really throwing you know, free time away if you're not doing that but I just felt no that is just too oversteer for me so I'm gonna go back to what I feel is a good set for me so making it a little bit lower on the wings make it a little bit more stable putting the off differential down again for more stability again for the suspension this is just aiding more stability and lowering it down try not to get as much rotation through the suspension and put slightly higher anti-roll bars 510 is really my go-to here and I think I might go back or oh, actually no I'm just gonna rock that now and you'll be able to see this is my first lap that I've done immediately we go straight into the 32s although it was an invalidated 32 here we're just going to stay on board again so immediately feeling so much more comfortable with the setup straight away and we're just going to keep on board as i just keep on just building that rhythm building that flow building that momentum now you've got to go what works for you and what works for me on this game is just having a car that is just always stable on the rear um, that's what is really important to me it can't stable on the rear uh, well I have to kind of really work in my steering to actually get it into the corner not to just flick it in and then it just drifts in or anything like that I, it that really doesn't suit me at all a car that I really kind of have a have to wrestle a little bit uh, I don't mind it being quite pointy but the rear always has to stay stable that's always what I look for and I recommend especially if you're doing league racing is find a setup that is very quick in the race and it lasts very well on the tires and usually you'll find that will be your fastest qualifying setup as well the only thing you'd really have to change is your front wing just a little bit but you can see go through here now uh, no keeping up just about on the track here well up on this 33 9 which we did with the default setup and with this you gain so much time 
in the slow speed corners with a setup compared to the stock setup here. Using all of the track going to here, it's very easy to lock up, which we keep on doing, but if you get it right, you can gain so much time and go across the line. That's a valid 32.6, which is still six tenths away from the target I'm actually aiming for. So, you know, although it's not bad, you know, there's plenty of time to find, and the lap wasn't absolutely horrendous, but we're just going to keep on going and just see how much I can improve. Love these sequence of corners. Took a couple of stabs going to this left hander, and Phyllis is completely blind left hander. They have to really focus on the shadow going to this corner. You can see the back end wanting to go and step away here, keep it in third gear just to minimize that wheel spin and just get that turn in, to be honest. That rotation that I always talk about going to here again. Easy to lock up, but short shifting into third gear on the exit. Didn't do it that time, but towards the end, I start to do that. Making sure I rev out to the max in the purple. If you don't do that, you are leaving some time on the table. We're going to be breaking very, very late into here and then hooking it on the inside. Track limits are not particularly strict for that left-hander. This corner, we want to hold it in third gear for as long as possible and then downshift into second just for that extra bite into the corner. Really, really wide. Have to, have to slide the car going to here. It is such a... That is such a weird corner. That's the weirdest corner I've done it in a car on this game. You have to literally force your car into a spin and go into this. But you can see, not hitting the apex there, but going out wide once again. This time, not locking up as much, but getting a slightly better exit and going across the line. This is a 32-3 now, so less than three temps away from the world record, which you could argue there was a lot more time in that. But I felt I needed a bit more downforce. So it just felt a little bit too under series i'm actually raising the front wings and everything as such as well and let's see what else am i going to do and i think that is it for now but i'm actually going to raise the tire pressures because if you put that higher it gives you a slightly better straight line speed but it will actually give you more turn in more rotation and stuff as well however if you did run those kind of tire pressures online you would find your tires heat up very very quickly so that's why you typically do not see that in league racing especially 50 percent races but coming across here making that change that is this is the first time i've done that with this change at all don't change the brake bias throughout the lap i keep it on 56 again which just allows me to break pretty late, good stopping power, but just to not over rotate the car going into the corner and allows me to just distribute the weight pretty nicely. Go for here, almost flat out here, just, ah, oh, just fractionally off the track. So I decide to continue going wide into the left hander here, but you can see, look at the time we've made up already in the car, still wanting to step out here, but that was just a fractional cut. And I went out wide and that left hander. So I thought there was just so much more time left in this second gear. And you can see short shifting into third gear now. Look at the exit we have got through here. It was a much better exit. But with this higher wing, I am going to lose some time on the straight. But this car is just purely about the corners. You can gain so much time if you can keep up through the corners. Hooking that inside again once more. Going into this corner. Sometimes staying third, but then going to fourth. Then down to third. And then second then going up through the gears pretty quickly nice and super wide into this one in the modern cars you kind of really want to attack this into the middle of the corner for this right hander not quite flat out which it actually did do it flat out on that occasion here looking at the tower on the right that's what we want to turn in. look at the time we've gained four temps up going to here let's see if we lock up ever so slightly going in deep here but still carrying some decent speed through the corner and that would have been a 31.812 that would have absolutely smashed the world record here but we're going to continue again still on the validated lap but what i've spoken about before once you hit those lap times you will find that you just keep on hitting them and again another 31.9 so i knew since i've hit that time i know what it feels like now i knew all i had to do was just hook up a lap to see if i could just just not cut or anything at all i just i knew i could do it and that's why you just got to keep on going just convince yourself that you know what it feels like to do that kind of lap this time getting a pretty decent exit coming off here now going on that curb because you want to minimize the distance of the track staying seventh gear through here for as long as possible same sip again high gears to just keep the rear end in check looking at that shadow once you pass it that is your turning in point 
turning very late, kissing the last plate of the apex. Doesn't matter if you get too much on the inside or the outside. And look at the time. We are so far up on this time. We have plenty of time to find in the end. You can see hitting the apex pretty nicely, short shift into the third game. Running a little bit on that curve, which is not optimal, but we are just under three temps up on this time. And you know how much time there is to be made in this last sector. Going up into seventh gear, the highest gear you can do. Breaking about 70 meters out, hitting the inside of this again, which we did very, very nicely. Going to here, staying in the high gear for as long as possible. Then going up, short shifting into third, then into fourth, really out wide. Force basically spinning the car, but that was a very nice corner. That was one of the best I did. But despite that, actually losing a little bit of time, not flat out this time. You have to get the line perfect in order to do that. Look at that tower. That's your braking and turning in point. Doing this very, very nicely now. And let's see this time if I could do it nicely. Not locking up. This corner, you have to go slow to get a good exit. And that is a 31.786. That was a very, very nice lap. But that last corner is so weird because you have to go slow. If you go too fast, you just lose it. And you can see already that was enough for the number one time. But as always... This was a very, very nice lap, and I felt there was still some more in the tank. So going into this turn one, braking just after the black box on the right-hand side, once it goes out of view, that's where you want to be braking. Getting not as good exit off this corner, hugging the inside to the right. This one, want to go in a straight line, hold it as flat out as much as you possibly can. Stay nice and tight to this. After that shadow, stay tight to the left, sacrifice a bit of speed so you get a better entry of this, using a bit more of the curb this time and on the exit. And we are just about to go green onto our previous lap, going to here now, breaking a little bit later, not hitting the apex as smooth here, but getting a decent exit and not running onto that curb. And you can see by not running on that curb, look how much time we have gained. We've gained, you know, almost 3 or 0.3 of a tenth of a second going out of here now let's see how late we dare to break going into this one if i could hook the inside of this a little bit nicer which i do pretty well let's see how high gear i stay in third gear this time staying in third gear for the entire time sometimes it's better to do that to keep the rear end in check this one very very weird corner but we get a pretty decent launch off this here let's see if i can go flat out through here yes we do this time complete flat out so we've got the line absolutely perfect then this one here could have been a little bit more aggressive, turned it slightly too late. But this one, you have to go slow through here. But again, a very nice line, gaining some time in the exit. And that is, again, another 31.754. So a very fractional improvement. But nonetheless, I was very happy of that. Didn't actually spend too long doing this. But yeah, as I said, I've been quite ill recently. And I felt enough was enough. That was, no nine temps quicker than the next no assist time and uh, almost three temps clear of second place so i felt it was a good effort although i feel on a perfect lap absolute perfect lap i feel you know, maybe a 31 four definitely a five 100 percent a five but a four or something i feel is something i was really in the tank but i was very happy with this setup here it really works to my strengths you know the 510 the one two and i think that is one four or five ride height i think that's one four but that works very well for me as we do these brakes and the tire pressures and of course the weight distribution always having to be on that 11 because otherwise you're just throwing away free time in my opinion but i really hope you enjoyed this i will be completing these in the classic cars and then i will be moving over to the modern cars that will be coming and i think i have done some of them already so thank you so much for the support means the world to me and i'll catch you very soon peace